Views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of any entities they represent or that of the program, its presenters, hosts, directors or other team members. This show is intended for audiences aged 23 and older. This production and its digital copies contain content of an adult nature. If you are easily offended or are under the age of 18, this show is not intended for you. The posts, pages and recordings within are intended for adults only and may include descriptions of scenes of sexual content, suggestive opinions, detailed discussions and graphic topics. Listener discretion is advised. Passionate pollies and sultry swingers, it's time for Lola's Lifestyle Lectures on your favorite seduction station, Lust FM, for the lustful listeners. Good evening, lustfuls, and welcome to Lesson 4 in Semester 1 of the non-monogamous spin-off of Lola's Lessons, Lola's Lifestyle Lectures. I'd like to start off by mentioning the endorsement site. The COF, Lola's favorite friends at the Council of Fantasy. The COF is a lifestyle-oriented community, catering for lifestylers, BDSM, and everybody that wants to learn a bit more about sex positivity, body positivity, women empowerment, and how to enhance their intimate relationships, right? Um, we host events and um, workshops in all spectrums. We've got a WhatsApp community. We've got a website. I mean, we've got everything. And also, we need more members. So come and join us. Come and join in the fun. Come and be a part of something that is really spectacular and really something profound. You guys can find us at www.counciloffantasy.co.za or you guys can visit my website at lalustfm. That's L L U S T fm.live and then just click on the whatsapp link and come and join the whatsapp community right the only shame the cof shames is shame itself your lola blakely production moderators for this evening are jaded mal she'll be helping with moderating and she'll be posting the obscene disclaimer every now and again Next one is Big Red. She'll be posting all the welcome messages to the new live listeners and she'll be doing the general moderating. Zane will be your conversation starter during the break. Please, guys, let's get those fingers working, right? I mean, type away, ask some questions, get involved. Tell us what you think of the show. Ask your questions. If you guys have questions for the guests from the first segment of um, before we go to commercial breaks, post them. Zane will be there to get your conversation starting during the break and getting our listeners to ask questions and he'll be keeping the chat on Podbean app to topic. Mr. Black Dragon is our production manager this evening whilst KB is hosting with Lola. He'll be posting the socials and updating the list of mods for the night. So if you guys see them in the chat, say hi. They're here to engage with our listeners and keep us safe during the air, during the airing. We all know that sex is a sensitive topic, right? And so is swinging and so is being poly and so is being kinky, right? So we need moderators to make sure that everybody that comes in and listens to the show and uh, engages on the actual app, on the Podbean app and chats to us, that everybody's kept safe and that we keep all of these weirdos at bay, right? Lola's co-host for this evening, for Lifestyle Lectures, not just this evening, the rest of the season, for Lifestyle Lectures is, of course, none other than the Queen Bee of Rabbits herself, Miss Polyamorous Black Dragon's wifey and my bunny. Miss KB. Hello, Miss KB. You are still not. I oh, know you're not muted anymore. Look at you being clever and shit. Hi, Miss Lola. How are you? Hello, my love. I'm fine. How are you? 
I'm good, just suffering in this heat a little bit, having no power up till a few minutes ago. I mean, we're going into light shedding at 10, right? But can I tell you the amazing guest that we have on, on um, this night, this evening show? My guest is this evening show. I popped in the message just before the show, and I'm going, guys, I'm going into light shedding at 10. What the hell am I going to do? They're like, oh, we've got power banks for days. Don't worry, we'll bring them. I'm going, I've got power banks for days too. That's not my problem. I need to run my PC. I need to run my soundboard. What am I going to do? They're like, oh, we'll bring our generator. <laughs> How nice is that? But We've got the power. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the so power. We, we, we don't have any interruptions on this evening's episode of the Lifestyle Lectures. And this evening we are doing doing it right versus getting done. Guys, we don't just get done, right? I mean, getting being a swinger means you are going to get done by a bunch of different facets of people, right? But there's a way to do it right if you want to get done, honey. Otherwise, you're going to end up ruining your marriage, ruining your relationship, hurting your partner, and being angry for you at yourself for the rest of fucking time being. So this evening, we've got... Lana's favorite couple, and I mean, I do mean Lana's favorite couple because they, they're really good friends of mine. Mr. and Mrs. Tucson, Debbie and James. You guys know them. We all love them. I mean, even people are recognizing them by now. They, they become celebrities, right? Okay. In their own right. <laughs> Debbie and James, good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Oh, I, and they look so pretty. Can I just tell you? Okay, well, all, we all know they are a hot couple, right? Really a hot couple. So, I mean, they look good. And they, yeah, yeah in, way too sweet. They, in studio is Lila, and we're all sitting out very intimately bundled up together this because we're, cozy. we're sharing very a mic. <laughs> <laughs> Can you join us remotely? We can see you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, there we go. <laughs> very sexy tonight as well. Hello. Thank you. Listen to Mr. Tusam. I mean, he's forever the flirter, right? Exactly. <laughs> How do you give him a day? He always greets um. me like that. But then again, I also always dress to impress. There we go. You do. You do. And you do. Press, you do. I mean, okay, that's my bunny. Hands off. I can look his free. <laughs> Debbie, how was your week? It was hectic. But, uh, yeah, here we are. Yeah, we are. Also, we've got pizza, we've got wine, we're happy, right? Yes. What more can you ask for? Exactly. James, yours? You really want to know what more we could ask for? <laughs> I mean, you really want to ask for? Yes. No. I, I, let's be adventurous. What more can we ask for? We can take our clothes off and we can get comfortable on this uh, fur rug. <laughs> purple. Mm, purple. He said fur. Fur rug. Yeah, purple fur rug. Purple fur rug. It's the color of fashion. I had a red one in and I was like, no, that's like a bit too catch. we got to make it. <laughs> it also happens to be the color of royalty. And I mean, I'll have a live show. I'm not complaining. <laughs> You better, listen, I'm going to turn this camera off if you continue with your fuckery, madam. <laughs> Can I just tell you guys, it's really hot in the studio, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just warm. You want some more? Yes, some more you are, let's, let's start power that thing up to... to as, no, don't, you don't have to put it on here because then you guys don't have no, it. I'm happy. Are you happy? Okay. Now that we've got some fresh air going in the studio, we can get to tonight's episode. We are doing... Doing it right versus getting it done. Why is this something that is important to the two of you? In in our adventures, we've we've been blessed to have spoken to a number of couples who um, their forays into the lifestyle have um, we found have been absolutely amazing. The journey from from the outset to where they are has been absolutely amazing. But we've also met some couples who've had some hiccups along the way. And some couples who their entry their entry point into the lifestyle hasn't gone as smoothly as it could have had they followed a few basic you know easy to follow easy to find um, guidelines and, and things that can just basically facilitate a, a better entry into the lifestyle. So what we wanted to do was just outline some of the pitfalls that some of the couples that we've spoken to um, have fallen into and just touch base on, on some of the things that people might not think about when they're trying to get into the lifestyle or thinking about getting into the lifestyle um, and just putting a list out there of what to watch out for and what to avoid and, and what to pursue. Debbie, do you think there's a difference between getting, getting done and doing it right? 
Yes, because you can do it and regret it, or you can plan ahead and be better, be mm. happy. Mm. Yeah. And do you think that there's um, possibly um, people or couples that would go into the lifestyle and one has been coerced so that the other one can finally find their happy space? And Absolutely. We've, we've heard that a few times. So yeah. it, it often happens that there's a protagonist in the relationship who wants to um, enter into the lifestyle and they have somebody that isn't on board with it but does it for the sake of keeping the peace with their significant other. And it's not contrary to, to what a lot of people might believe. It's not always the husband or the boyfriend or the male part in a, in a um, dynamic that always pushes for it. We've, um, we've met some people where it's been the, um, the wife that's actually pushed and the husband reluctant, reluctantly has gone along with it to basically keep her happy. Mm. Um, but yeah, in most instances, uh, that conversation has happened at the outset. The couple has spoken about it, and they have jointly agreed that, that it's something that they both want to pursue. And the entry into the lifestyle is a lot smoother. But it, it does happen often that it's it's more one-sided than it should be. And um, yeah, the facilitation of entry into the lifestyle for those couples doesn't always go very well. Mm. Mm. So basically, if you if you decide I want to have sex with my with other people, that's amazing. Everybody should explore and be happy. But if you're in a relationship, both of you need to be on the same page. Otherwise, it's it's gotta be consensual. It has to be consensual, and if you're not both on the same page, it's gonna cause trouble. Mm -hmm. I mean, Miss Miss Tucson Debbie has gone and she's got her whole. Literally, her whole um, yes, notepad. Mm -hmm. She's got a whole notepad with written written notes. So, I mean, these are the kind of guests that we love, right? Prepared guests. <laughs> I felt like a high school child that had to do homework. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Katie, <laughs> do you think I'm a slave driver? No, Miss Lola. But I mean, <laughs> I was Everything's admissive right? this one, right? <laughs> no, Miss Lola. I'm as submissive at heart, Miss Lola. You know that. <laughs> Listen, can I just tell you, I honked the whole of KB Saturday. She was on call with me. If it wasn't on the app, it was on video call. It was on sound testing. It was on stream testing. It was on website testing. The whole, I, I took a whole Saturday. She, she didn't get time to relax. <laughs> Everyone's on board with what you're doing. I think what you're doing is amazing. You're putting information out there that um, there's been a huge void for a long time, you know, mm. especially local content. You can jump onto, onto a myriad of platforms and watch videos about how to enter into the lifestyle as a, New Zealander or as an Australian or as a, as a Brit, but mm. local content like what you're doing, um, not just for the lifestyle, but for the alternative um, avenues and sex of the kinky side of the mm. lifestyle, there's a huge vacuum in, in, in South Africa anyway for mm. information and I think a lot of people are, are, are buying into that and a lot of people want to help you and a lot of people want to get that information out. Okay, um, let me go with... Thank you for that. I appreciate the compliments. <laughs> but let's get, get used to people complimenting and <laughs> recognizing you. Thank you very much. But let's get back to tonight's tonight's topic, right? Getting it done versus doing it right. Why? Why? Let's just do some why. Um. So people decide. Okay. I or we want to have sex with other people, and there's there could be different reasons. So one of the reasons that we've heard a lot is our sex life is boring. So the first thing that you should try is not swinging. Mm. How about trying stuff? To listen to Lola's lesson, that would increase your sex life. That would be the first step. But try stuff like, have you tried toys? <coughs> have you tried to play out fantasies, role play, dress up, different mm. locations? Watching porn together, there's so many things that you can try to do as a couple to try and spice up your life. Mm. Um, so swinging shouldn't be the first mm. first thing that you, you go for. Try other avenues first. first. So just because it's boring doesn't mean that you should become a, a swinger. Mm. Um, you need to try and 
fix your sex life first before you try and invite other people in. Because we've had this discussion before, right? If there's a problem in your sex life, and 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 so if, you, if there's a problem in your relationship, and sex life included, right? Yeah. There's a problem within your intimate relationship. You guys shouldn't be embarking on on a swinging journey. Okay, okay, get the fuck off that swing, and I mean, go try a seesaw rather, because that's <laughs> when the swing's not going to be helping you. Yeah, yeah. Swinging will bring a whole a whole dynamic to your relationship, <coughs> but if your if your relationship isn't sound at the outset, mm. it's, it's really going to it's really going to test the fundamentals of your relationship. Yeah. Mm. It, 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 sincerely, if you if you aren't absolutely happy with one another in, in all facets, and I'm not just talking in the bedroom, I'm talking about the um, chat that happens when the hubby gets home in the afternoon. The pillow talk. Exactly. Everything, everything around and surrounding being a, a happy couple, if that's not prevalent in your relationship, and you think that bringing a, a third or a fourth or Fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, ten into the relationship is going to fix it. Um, You're making a grave mistake. It's, it's, it's definitely not the. It's not it's the not the that that you should be embarking on. Mm. It's the same as when couples uh, feel unhappy in their relationship and they decide, oh, let's have a baby because maybe that will fix it. Mm. That will definitely not fix it. It's you guys are going to find yourself a problem. problem. Exactly. So bringing in another person or more than one person into your relationship is definitely. It brings in more problems. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe. So I'm getting it down to it's about your um, personal relationships, your communication, your negotiations of your interests. Um, basically, make it kinky before you make it, before you decide to become a swinger. Exactly. Make sure that your relationship is absolutely <coughs> sound on all different levels. Yes. That is inclusive of your physical intimacy, your emotional well-being, your mental states, um, in every f every format of your relationship before you decide to embark on a non-monogamous journey into that space. Um, in, in doing it right, I mean, there's been a lot of chatter that I have picked up on that there are platforms where you've got people that are basically catfishing um, if you want to do it right are there like in your experiences because obviously you've done this for a very long time um, what kinds of platforms and people would you recommend people go through in terms of their firstly if, if there is a problem in their relationship would they like go to Dr. M or speak to Miss, uh, Miss Lola um, that's who I would recommend for people to do couple couple coaching. Most, most um, very definitely. You, 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 there's, there's but are there also other platforms that they can use for those types of? Before they start um, adventuring, before they yeah. embark on the adventure of, of becoming a swinger, get the fundamentals right. So become happy with with one another as a couple. So like you said, KB, reach out to a professional to get help in your relationship. Get that grounding first. Once that grounding is solid, tested, and proven, and you then want to start exploring. There's, there's a lot of um, mechanisms and platforms to, to start looking at finding other lifestylers. There's uh, websites, um, there's uh, social media sites dedicated to swinging. I mean, on, on um, iOS and um, Android as well, there's, there's apps that pretty much link swingers together just by location. There's also clubs that you can explore um, in, in South Africa. There's probably 15 to 20 very well-known clubs that host parties once a week. Um, reach out to the clubs, find out about becoming a member, what it takes to become a member. Try and um, find out if those clubs have got a social media platform. A lot of them offer Telegram and WhatsApp platforms where people can chat openly and, um, you know, after getting to know who's on the, on the, on the platform and deciding that couple is uh, uh, the type of art candy that we're looking for. Reaching out to that couple, speaking to them privately on, on, on whatever platform you decide to speak to them on, and then meet them at a club. Clubs often facilitate newbies that, that want to get together. So yeah, there is a, there's a variety of platforms that are available. Um, SwingingHeavenZA.com, help me, no one? Swinging Heaven. Swinging Heaven. Heaven. But also, just join the Council of Fantasy. Here we go. Council you guys can actually find, find.
found there was a lot of people that, that want to have a cup. Exactly. Find other people that are looking for similar interests. Um, Miss Miss Tucson, so so within your research, okay, and within your your notebook this evening, <laughs> I know this is actually something that we needed, <laughs> and that's how it goes, right? Because you and I have gone through your notes, but I mean, Kobe was busy and she had no power and no load, sh well, load shedding and no power and like no no nothing, so she didn't go through the notes with us. <laughs> What's next on your agenda? So I think we should start at I decide, not me. Mm -hmm. I as a, an individual decide mm -hmm. I want to explore sex with other people. Mm -hmm. But you're in a relationship, so you're going to have to discuss it with your partner. Find a way to bring it up. I mean, it's not an easy topic if you've never discussed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something we discussed in the first season, right? Is how to how to start that conversation. So it's got to be consensual, right? Yeah. So you're going to have to discuss it with your partner, and you're going to have to find out how they feel about it. Mm. Because if they are not happy about the idea, you cannot push ahead and decide. I've decided that I want to have sex with people, and you need to just be on board. Mm. It's going to have to be lots of conversations, lots of research. You're going to have to make sure that your partner is on board, on board yeah. to do this. Partners also if, interested. on the other hand, you guys as a couple have discussed it in the past or you've had fantasies about it and you then decide that, listen, we want to explore sex with other people, then it's different, but you still have to make sure that you at all time know what your partner's feelings are about. Mm. Um, you and that open just, line of com communication. You're going to have to communicate all the time. There is no such thing as too much communication when it comes to the lifestyle. Mm. You have to at all times be confident that your partner and you are on the same page and mm. that you want the same thing out of the lifestyle. And if your um, if your avenue, if the, the fantasies <coughs> for you change, you have to discuss it with your, with your partner. Mm. You can't just decide, okay, we've done threesomes and now I want to do an orgy with different people and your partner's not involved. Oh. Um, they're not on the same page. You then have to continuously speak to your partner and make sure that they're on the same page, that they are happy. If you mm. push to go ahead with something that your partner is not happy with, you will ruin your relationship. Mm, absolutely. Um, your, a happy partner is a happy relationship. That mm. is both ways. Everybody always says happy wife, happy life. Mm. But it's the, the other way as well. I think one of, the, <clears throat> one of the biggest questions we get asked from single guys, when I say single guys, guys that approach us, um, guys playing as, as an individual not as a couple is. Will, will share the fact that they might be married or have a significant other and want that significant other to get into the into the lifestyle but they have no idea how to breach the topic with them. Mm. We've heard that many, many times. Uh, how to approach that conversation, yeah. So the advice that we give those those guys is to explore with their partner fantasies mm -hmm. and the easiest and, and the mechanism that we find we've had a lot of feedback from the guys months down the line when their partners do eventually um, get on board with them is that they reach out to to, to them through the, the medium of porn mm -hmm. so they'll start watching porn with their partner a lot of couples mm -hmm. do watch porn together and they'll start watching porn with a threesome or with another couple. Mm. And then they'll ask their, their significant other, you know, what is your feeling on that? How do you feel about the fact that this couple is now with another couple? Is that something mm. that has crossed your mind? Is it something that you would like to explore? And it's, it's, a, it's a mechanism to cross that bridge, that very awkward, very first conversation that you have to have. 99% of swingers have had that awkward conversation and there's always had to be one person that was the one that was brave enough to raise it in the first instance. And after that conversation has been had, it's literally downhill from them and downhill in a good way. It's it's an open communication channel that gets opened up and then the couple starts discussing fantasies and then they start exploring and oftentimes 
the vehicle of porn is the easiest mechanism and entry point into that discussion. Mm, I'm just starting out. Kobe? So you must probably find that they will use the porn to, be, uh, to maybe even indulge in some role playing. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, I do have a frog in my throat. Um, maybe get involved into some role playing and then that would probably help with that opening up of that conversation. Mm, um, mm. Uh, does that also mean that, like, in those negotiations or co conversations, sorry, I speak from kinky terms, um, that there are, like, boundaries set in a couple? Like, do you, do, are there boundaries that get set, like, okay, but you, we can play and we can touch and we can feel, but there's no penetration? Does Absolutely. that kind of scenario mm. happen? We, we would advocate most strongly to set those boundaries at, at the outset. So a couple that is um, interested in, in, in the lifestyle. Um, the most important thing is to decide A, what you want, and B, what you don't want. And it needs to be a, a collaborative effort, and it needs to be a collaborative agreement. You can't have one half of the, of the party deciding that they want A, B, C, and D, while the other part only wants D. If, if there's not consensus in a couple of, you know, in terms of what the hard yeses and hard noes are, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to cause conflict, it's going to cause confusion. Um, you're not going to know where the fun begins and where the fun ends. Mm. You could very easily start going down a path where one couple, uh, one half of the couple is absolutely um, on board with full penetration, kissing on the lips, where they haven't had that discussion with their partner to, to you know, make the decision about what they do want and what they don't want, and they could find themselves quite easily in a situation where they possibly naked in a room with another couple. Um, and then having a, a very awkward conversation amongst themselves about, hold on, why are we doing this? I didn't know we were going to do this. Or why are you doing that to her? I didn't know that that was on the table. Mm. So it's very important to have that discussion up front and, and lay down a framework in terms of what you want to have happen and also be very clear between one another what you don't want and what you won't allow to have, you know, have happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just want to interject that. So we've got a very similar thing in the kinky, in the kinky community, in the kink community, right? And that is you don't change your play mid, -sex, mid, mid session. You go with, according to the negotiation, whatever you guys decided ahead of time, you stick to the contract. That's the contract. That's what you signed off on. That's this play and that's this play only. You can renegotiate after the fact, but you don't change the play mid play. Okay. That's, and the same principle applies, yeah. Also, what I wanted to add was, um, <laughs> like, uh, beginning or initiating a conversation goes back to last week we had an episode on Lola's Lessons Friday Night on Pillow Talk. This is part of Pillow Talk, guys. This is part, this is part and parcel of Pillow Talk. This is along with, how was your day? What did you have to eat? How are you feeling? How's your capacity? Do you want to swim? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is part of your pillow talk. Yeah. Sorry, um, Miss Tucson, Debbie, I interjected there now, but I just wanted to add to it. No, that's fine. So, um, we, we, we I was have... Sit, you guys can sit back. I'll move the mic no, towards you guys. <laughs> so, we have rules, um, and some of them are hard limits. So, mm -hmm. um, stuff like safe sex only. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, an unbreakable rule that both of us are on board with. Mm -hmm. and we know that that rule will not allowed to be broken. Mm -hmm. I don't care who who we with or how sexy they are or how nicely they ask, that's one of our heart limits. So mm. you as a couple have to decide before you even start engaging with other people, what is it that you want out of the lifestyle, but what will you not allow? So some people don't allow kissing uh, strangers. Um, some people don't want penetrative sex. Um, some people, some girls won't have anal sex. Um, there, there's, there's all kinds of things that you need to decide as a couple what you don't want to allow to keep your relationship safe. Mm, and yeah. you have to agree on it as a couple. Yeah. It, it can't come from one party. If you go into a, into a play with another couple and there's any form of resentment because something has been taken off the table and you haven't wrapped that up in your own relationship before the play happens, it's not going to be the most satisfying experience to to be in that situation, not be comfortable with what um, you know what you've agreed on. Make sure that you you comfortable and you know everybody's on board with the agreement 
beforehand and everybody knows exactly what's expected of them and everybody knows what's expected of the other couple as well. Mm. Like, and a part of that is also to make the other couple aware of what you guys want out of the, out of the, the, the play date. Mm. So, I mean, the worst thing that you could do if you're a, a new couple getting into the lifestyle and you've had that, that first meet with a couple or you go to their house, whatever the case may be, there's, there's a thousand different scenarios that can play out to get you to that point where you're in a room with another couple. Um, mm. You need to have that conversation with that couple too. Yeah. So you need to openly discuss with them what you want to achieve out of that interaction. And what you won't allow. Mm. Yeah. So in essence, there's two parts of the negotiation yes. when it comes to when it comes to embarking on a swinging journey. Where in kink you'll just have an, one negotiation and that's with out of the top of the bottom. So there's one contract, there's one negotiation. Whereas when it when it comes to a, a, a kinky situation, when it comes to a swinging situation or a non-monogamous play date, you guys are A, going to have a conversation and negotiation in the contract yourself. between yourselves, and the contract I mean in a, in a figurative form, right? Yeah. You're going to have a, a negotiation, negotiation agreements and a contract between yourselves, as well as that, that same contract is going to be like an add-on to the contract and negotiation that you have with the other, with the other party. Whether it's whether a single female whether it's a single guy or a couple. Or a couple, yes, okay. Okay. But it doesn't have to happen. It doesn't, in, in many instances, happen. I mean, we've mm. we've come across it quite often where couples will meet at a at a club, um, and with within two minutes of chatting, move off to a, a private area and start playing, and mm. there hasn't been that discussion. But um, we won't mention any names. But we we heard a story from from a couple fairly recently where. The issue of um, what was allowed and what wasn't allowed may not have been covered as clearly or as broadly as it as it could and have it or should have. have been. Oh. And as a result of that, the playdate didn't go. Um, the playdate went well in, in the eyes of the couple that we were speaking to, but after the fact, there was an issue raised by the couple that they were playing with that um, they felt that a line had been crossed. Mm. So that communication hadn't happened at the outset. And it caused a problem for that couple a day or three after. Mm. So yeah, you know, crossing the crossing the T's and dotting the R's is very important. You know what, as Debbie said, what we do want out of this and what we absolutely don't want out of this this um, this relationship or this. Um, I'm struggling for a word here. Let's play that. Let's play that. This yeah. interaction. Mm. I love that, I, and, and I love the authenticity of where you're coming from. But it comes from the fact that you, you can hear when when you when you when you speak about this. This is something that comes from the heart. You're not just talking um, a bunch of nonsense. Let's go to Gaby. So, how would you do that right? That communication, especially. I mean, you're walking into a club. You're going to meet up with a couple. You've got your negotiation set out with your partner. Um, how how do you, how do you do it right in terms of communicating with the people or person you're going to you're going to be playing with? Um, obviously, they have certain expectations. They're hoping for the full Monty, but you obviously have your limits. How do you do that right? How do you get into that a uh, dynamic? On the right levels. I think not even communication. That's a very good question, uh, Kelly. But not 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 only communication. Uh, maybe this is something that's on your list, right? How do we do it right? I can speak. Right? From, I can speak from my experience. So if we go to a club and we see a couple that we think are, are our type of couple, we'll introduce ourselves, sit down, chat to them. Invariably, <coughs> it's small talk for a few minutes, and then. If we feel that there's synergies flowing, we'll say to them, are you guys keen for a play date tonight? And if mm. they show interest, we'll say, cool. Then we'll start discussing what we're open to and what we're not open to. So we'll say to them, so we are a same room couple, so we expect to be within our shot of one another. Our Debbie has to be um, at least in my, in, my, in my periphery, or I, I at least need to be able to see her. Oh, well, she needs to be able to see you. Me. I would keep my eye on you. <laughs> well, for us, it's both ways. Explain so <laughs> why. So we get turned on very much by seeing one another's pleasure. So if if I'm by myself and there's a single gent at the club, um, sorry, if, if we're there by ourselves and there's a single gent at the club and that single gent 
uh, appeals to Demi, and she says to me that she'd like to play with him. Me seeing her play with that gentleman is, a, is an absolute turn on for me. What's that term that, that, that we were Compersion. actually... Compersion. We, we spoke about that earlier, yeah. So, with the, when it comes to... to so, sorry, can I... I need to interject. Did we know that the word or the phrase compersion comes from the poly community? Did we know that? No. no. I learned that. At my dinner night. <laughs> <laughs> you learn every day. Sure that can you give us a definition of what that means? We had the definition. You didn't listen to the first episode, did you? I did listen that's to a smack on the That's a smack on the knuckles. <laughs> so conversion basically stripped down to its bare elements means um, a form of gratification from one party and a couple seeing pleasure derived by the other party. Yes. Yeah. The physical okay, acts so of pleasure. So it's almost like a, a voyeuristic in gratification. A, in a sense, I think there's a lot of facets to it, but it, it's, it's more than just uh, eroticism. It's more of an emotional... Uh, an emotional happiness that you derive from seeing your loved one receiving pleasure, whether mm. it's somebody buying them a gift or somebody taking them out uh, for a holiday, or seeing your partner giving, happy, somebody happy, giving yeah. them an orgasm. Yeah. Their happiness creates and stimulates happiness within mm. itself. And both of us um, feel like that, so it, it goes for both of us. So yeah, we'll to, to go back to what you were asking, KB. So we'll we'll chat to that couple and we'll say to them. So we are a same room couple, and we only engage in, in safe play. And for Debbie, anal is off the table, and that's it. That that for all intents and purposes are our three non-negotiables. Mm, sorry, there's another one. Right. No guy comes to mama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay, Black Dragon has been so nice and so sweet to give us the proper definition of um, compersion, right? It, compersion is a noun, and compersion, um, unaccountable, um, the, the, just help me with that pronunciation of that word, um, James. What James, vacation? James needs his, his glasses. Oh, uh, yes, James oh, needs his glasses. Vicarious. The word is vicarious. vicarious. There we go. Now, so, um, uh, compersion is a noun. Um, a vicarious joy associated with seeing one's partner have a joyful, romantic, or sexual relation with another. That is what compersion is, basically. Okay, Debbie, what's next on your list that we need to discuss this evening? I've just watched them swap positions. It's freaking cool. <laughs> I mean, I was holding the mic, and I'm just, I don't know if it was a stomach or a boob or something, and it's like, <laughs> my hand's in a happy place at the moment, I'm not washing this hand. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, that's why we swapped, because James wants to be close to the pizza. <laughs> that's so cheesy of you, no thank you, not right now, I'm busy hosting the show. <laughs> We're eating pizza in the studio. The okay. man is hungry. I mean, the man's hungry. We've had him work it's today. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. <laughs> you won't believe how much screwing I was doing earlier. You were screwing my cupboards. Yes, that, I was screwing in my room. room. <laughs> you were screwing in my room. I was screwing in my room. James, I dare you. <laughs> okay, so now you guys <coughs> have decided that you want to swing. You're on the same page. You've made your heart your heart limit list mm -hmm. but now you have to take it a step further and you need to decide what is it that you want to do in the lifestyle mm -hmm. um, do you want to be a voyeur mm -hmm. and watch other people have sex do you want to be an exhibitionist and you want other people to watch you um, and that's a, that's, that's a fairly easy way for a lot of people that's new and nervous in the lifestyle, instead of just going out and having sex with people and then regretting it, regretting it the next day because they don't know how they're going to feel about it, um, what they can do is they can engage in soft play um, and do a same room experience with another couple where they either just watch the other couple have sex. Mm. Or they have sex and the other couple have sex. There's no interaction between them sexually, mm. um, but they just watch each other. Um, so it's basically like watching, watching live porn, right? It's basically like watching live porn. Mm. And that's how a lot of new and nervous couples uh, 
so to say, break the ice to see how will they feel mm. uh, being naked in front of other people or mm. seeing other people naked mm. in real life. I want to interject on that, and um, this is I'm going slightly off topic, but there's a very valid reason for this. Um, just this week on on um, the COF WhatsApp community route, we had a um, discussion about why Lola, as an individual, and that's me, okay, not just my company, not just the production team, but me myself, um, why I do not promote. Um, lifestyle clubs that offer free entrance and I just quickly want to touch on this right yeah. because like you said now there are voyeuristic couples okay there are exhibition exhibitionist couples in the lifestyle right so if you are um, an exhibitionist and you are exhibiting mm -hmm. sexual um, conduct in one of these lifestyle clubs I mean people walk around naked they have sex freely um, you know Walking in there is like a free for all. If if you're not paying for entrance, you're getting in for free. You see, you don't have to book. You don't, you don't have to tell them that you can. You don't have to be a member. They don't know who you are. Exactly. So there's no sense of protecting the community. So I just wanted to read. I, I want to put this out there because I've had a lot of backlash on socials. Why don't you promote these clubs? There's a reason for it, right? You, these clubs got to realize that they they hold a very important part in, in um, the non-monogamous society, and that is protecting the community, protecting their members and protecting their patrons of their clubs, offering free entrance at these clubs where people are walking around. I mean, that's, that's your vulnerable state. I mean, you're naked, you're exposed, you're having sex. That's just your most vulnerable. You're having sex open, right? If you're not charging entrance fee, you can't even get into a dance strip club without paying entrance fee. How are you going to get into a, a, a club where people have open sex live? Okay, with our fine industry. That's why I'm, I'm sta I stand by it. I don't care what, what like the, the public has to say about that. That's my thought and you guys aren't going to change my mind. I just wanted to like, put that out there. That's why. If I, if I can add my two cents. So Please do. If you, if you have just bought a new car and there's a garage down the road offering free services. I'm going to go to free services. Are you going to go to free services? You're not going to wonder what type of service you're going to get on your car? <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd be put off by a company that was offering free service. Look, Anybody yes. and everybody can bring any car there and it can just be service. You've got to wonder what type of service is going to be happening in your car. And where the parts come Yeah. So. <laughs> also, if you walk into the lifestyle club, don't, don't expect to be serviced. Let's no, just no, get no, that no. out there. <laughs> just an analogy. So. Also, just to add that your, your sexuality and your. Um, your, your practices of sex is very much intimate. It's sacred. Mm -hmm. It's part of your sacred being. It's an absolute vulnerability that you're sharing with other people. And if you don't know who's walking into a club because they, there's no entrance being paid, there's no bookings being made, you're not actually being able to, you're not able to trust whether or not those people are going to uphold that level of sacred because mm. of the fact, I mean, all of us have a normal day job. All of us happen to, most of us happen to play under pseudonyms because we need to protect our Promise. normal lives, our, our livelihoods. You and how, if you're walking into a club with no, with no entrance <coughs> fee, how do you know that your, your, your me. being is safe? Mm. You've got to question why there isn't a vetting process. I mean, there needs to be a level of accountability. So if you'd imagine yes. that you go to um, an entity, a place, and you have um, a bad experience, something happens, your, um, your drink gets spiked, or your partner um, gets touched inappropriately or approached inappropriately, or heaven forbid, something happens that um, is a lot more serious. And there's no vetting process, there's no... Um, mechanisms to, to manage the people that are coming in there. And you approach the, the, the organizers of that event and you say to them, so um, it, it turns out that our drink was spiked or my husband was fondled or my wife was fondled or something worse happened. Where's the accountability <coughs> in that? What are they going to do? Are they going to say to you, sorry, we can't help you because we don't know who was in the club that night or we don't know who was in the venue that night? Look, those venues have got their place. I'm sure there's some people that like that uh, anonymity and people that like that, that risk uh, element to it. Um, it's, it's, it's not something we subscribe to. We would definitely like to be in an in a, in a event space where if something did go wrong, we, there would be some type of uh, uh, accountability that we could expect from the, from the organizers. And also, 
to be able to relax in a venue where you know that it's not just anybody from the street that's just walked in and has just made themselves comfortable in front of your wife who is now um, bearing herself to the to you know the, the fully exposed and vulnerable members of that of that of that venue. Um, you at least like to know that the people have. What are you looking for? There we go. Oh. Uh, <laughs> looking for the notepad. She worked like hard on her homework. <laughs> so uh, there's, uh, I'm not going to name any of the any of the entities, but there's a place in Durban that encourages people to just walk in, and uh, from what I understand, there's no payment. Um, and from from my experience with with interactions with that entity on, on social media, there is a a, a, a caliber of of kingster that enjoys that. If that's what you, if, if you, if you're not risk averse, if you, you know, if you're prone to to accepting that risk, then by all means explore. But just mm. go in there with an open mind and go in there with the knowledge that should something go wrong, there is going to be very little in the way of, of accountability from the people that are organising that event. Mm. That's that's pretty much what it comes down to. Mm. Um, we host an event for uh, a certain space, and one of the um, one of the merits that, that a lot of the people that join us at, at the event um, have cited is that there is a screening and vetting process of people that come to the event. It makes them feel safer. Mm. Uh, they, they, they arrive at the event space and they know that it, at least if something, heaven forbid, if something were to go wrong, that there would be some trace back in terms of, of every single person that entered into the place and came through the roof. Mm. I mean, vetting is another form of added security for lifestyle mm. Some Some event spaces insist on uh, certified copies of IDs to get in. Uh, we don't go to that to that level. Mm. Well, we, the CIF actually does. We, we've got, I, you need to send us your ID. I need to make sure that you're bloody 18. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's protecting the men, that's protecting the community. Yeah. Right? We've got to protect the community. Yes. Look, last falls, we've been chatting away already for 45 minutes, well over time. Um, the lifestyle, um, uh, lifestyle lectures always runs for about two hours. So it's almost time for commercial break. Before we go to commercial break, I'm going to go ahead and just remind everybody about our um, moderators, our Lola Blakely moderators for this evening. Your Lola Blakely production moderators for this evening are Jaded Mel. She'll be moderating and um, doing the obscene disclaimer. Uh, Miss Big Red will be posting while well, she posts the welcoming message. Why can't I scroll down on this damn thing? Now? You know it. Computers and me tonight, but we are just not vibing, right? Big Red is posting the welcoming messages to new, to new live listeners and general moderating. Mr. Zane, I'm so glad Mr. Zane joined our moderating team. Can I tell you why? Because he, have, I, have I told you the story about Zane, Miss KB? Zane, Ms. have I? He came from your shows. He actually won tickets to come join us at one of the CIA. He was the first winner. Yes, he was the first one, and he's also been one of the most loyal, lustful listeners because he's been listening ever since episode one, and he hasn't missed an episode. He listens to every single one live. Anyway, so Zayn has now been promoted to a bloody load of bloody production moderator, right? Zayn, we love you. This afternoon, he was on a call with me. He, I even bother the mods. <laughs> on their Saturdays to help me with my shit. <laughs> um, Zane will be your conversation starter during the break. So he's going to be getting you guys to interact, the couple of people that are live on the actual Podbean app, and getting our listeners to ask questions and um, get your questions ready for Mr. and Mrs. Tucson, Debbie and James for when we can return from the commercial break. And he'll be keeping the chat on the um, Podbean app to topic. Mr. Black Dragon is our production manager our 2 IC production manager this evening whilst KB is hosting. He will be production manager for every lifestyle lectures show. So if you guys see these mods in the chat, say hi. They're here to engage with our listeners. They're here to keep us safe during the sacred space and the sacred show of discussing, swinging and all of these intimate moments, right? Feel free to ask them questions or send them a wave. And on that, let's go to a slight commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Go refill your drinks. Go get comfortable. Go get into your lingerie if you have to. Don't go anywhere though. So don't put your app or any other device that you guys are listening off of. Don't put it app. Uh, don't put it down. Don't put it away. Don't put it softer. Don't mute us because we'll be back after this break with some more top tips. 
for getting yourself swinging ready and doing it right versus just getting it done with Mr. and Mrs. Tucson. Sometimes we're looking for the more, but we just don't know what the more is. And then we come to play with me. Three words that mean play, toys, fun, games, truthfulness, with intimacy, connection, relationships. And finally me, it starts with self, and that is something that Play With Me stands for. Play With Me is a place where you have an experience of all of those things. One complete cycle. You're welcome to pop in with us, shop at the game for your four ways, or find us at www.playwithme.co.za. If you're looking for that more, please get in touch. Sacred Intimacy Couples Retreat on the South Coast, KZN. From the 23rd to the 25th of February, wake to the sound of the sea, renew your connection, relax in bliss body massage, and reconnect with your love. Go to www.blissandrelaxation.com for more info.
Ladies, envision an experience that transcends the ordinary. Welcome to Art by LEM Studios, where our boudoir photo shoots are not just moments captured, but transformative journeys. From the moment you step into our studio to the final click of the camera, we are dedicated to guiding you on a path of rediscovering your femininity, nurturing your self-love and boosting your self-confidence. It's more than just a photo shoot. It's an intimate celebration of the incredible journey you've walked. Our mission is to create a safe space where every woman, mother, daughter, sister, partner, can embrace her uniqueness and vulnerability without judgment and criticism. Immerse yourself in an experience that goes beyond photography. Email us on art by L-E-M, A-R-T, B Y A L L I M at Gmail dot com or visit our social media to embark on a boudoir journey that celebrates you. Art by LEM Female Central Photography, where every experience tells the story of empowerment. Our handles are Instagram dot com art full stop B Y full stop A L L I M and on Facebook it's Ellie Mask. That is A L L I M W A S K E.
views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of any entities they represent or that of the program, its presenters, hosts, directors or other team members. This show is intended for audiences aged 23 and older. This production and its digital copies contain content of an adult nature. If you are easily offended or are under the age of 18, this show is not intended for you. The posts, pages and recordings within are intended for adults only and may include descriptions of scenes of sexual content, suggestive opinions, detailed discussions and graphic topics. Listener discretion is advised. And we... Oh, that was a slight delay. Hi, last Falls, we are back after our slight commercial break. We had to go fill our tummies, our drinks were running empty. And Lola just needed a breather because I'm in studio with two gorgeously hot people. So I just needed to catch a little bit of a break. Welcome back to this episode of um, Lola's Lifestyle Lectures. Hold on, okay, let me do this properly. What's wrong with you, Lola? We don't fuck around here, no? We find out. Welcome to episode lesson number four in semester number one of Lola's Lifestyle Lectureships. I'm going to go back and I'm going to remind you guys who your Lola Blakely production moderators are this evening on the Podbean app. Jaded Mal, she'll be moderating and doing an obscene disclaimer, big red posting welcoming messages to the new live listeners, general moderating. Zane started some conversations, I see, during the commercial break, um, and asking, getting people to ask a couple of questions on this and on tonight's episode. Black Dragon is our production manager, while KB is co-hosting with Lola, because KB's now not, you, you wear a lot of hats, hats, my bunny, don't you? I do miss Lola, I really do. I mean, not only are you like sometimes, well, most of the time is my sounding board, but you're also my production manager. You crack the whip on the mods. I mean, you make sure all of my socials run properly. You make sure you run my blogs. And on top of that, <laughs> you still can't host a whole season with me. You are a woman of multi-talents, my baby, multi-talents. <laughs> So Black Dragon is the production manager whilst KB is hosting with me um, and then he also posts the socials and updating the list of mods for this evening. So if you guys see them in the chat while we're busy on air with this evening's show, say hi, they're not yet to buy it, they're not yet to like police you, they yet, yet to keep the uh, topic and the conversation on the actual app relevant and up to topic and also to keep us safe in the sacred space while we um, discuss this very intimate um, episode of doing it right versus getting it done when you're a swinger. In studio with Lola, Katie's joining us remotely, but in studio with Lola, we've got the gorgeous couple, Lola's favorite friends, and I do say they are my favorite couple. There's no other couple that's not my favorite couple. It's too simple fun. <coughs> Mr. and Mrs. Too Simple Fun, Debbie and James, joining us in studio this evening. This is a, this is a very intimate comfortable affair this evening. It's very intimate. We can't sit closer to each other if we tried. I mean, we can. Hold on, hold on, There's always laps. <laughs> and I don't mean swimming pool laps, yes. <laughs> okay, let's quickly take a look at the app. While we, whilst we were on um, commercial break, let me take a look at the listeners. Okay, um, listen, listeners, you guys are absolutely fucking phenomenal. Let me just tell you, because we're standing on a thousand two hundred live listeners. Take a look at that, Debbie. Can you see? Well done. One thousand two hundred live listeners. I mean, there's a lot of people sure. interested in swinging, apparently. Yeah. yeah. And we're teaching them to do it right, not just get done. I mean, they're going to get done, but they need to do it right. <laughs> whilst we on, whilst we were on commercial break, um, Zane said thank you, thank you to everyone listening to Lola's last our lectures uh, episode, uh, season one, episode four. The host and guests have touched on a variety of contexts regarding tonight's episode subject: doing a drive versus getting it done. Any questions or clarity on um, the, any content discussed will be welcome. Thank you. Please don't leave. We're on a short break, five minutes. Okay, regarding hard limits. Here's one question. Regarding hard limits, how do you approach the subject when your hard limits differ from your partner's? Mm, this is a good one. 
Do you compromise, um, not pursue swinging at all, or have lengthy discussions attempting to reach a solution? Option C, most very definitely option C. There's going to be resentment. If you go into um, any type of interaction and one half of the party is doing something that the other half doesn't want to do, there is going to be a resentment at the end of the evening. Mm. Um, a lot of lifestyle is referred to it as taking one from the team, and that can come in um, many different guises. It can either be um, a couple hooking up with a couple where maybe the husband isn't very attracted to the wife and the other, and the other party, sometimes the other way around. But if your limit is is um, compromised, there's going to be there's going to be fallout and repercussions. Especially if it's a hard limit for you and it's something that you absolutely do not want to have happen. Yeah. So to put context in it, so we've met some couples where one of their absolute hard limits is no kissing. They view kissing as something intimate and private. Um, reserved for the love that they feel for one another and while it might feel or sound or, or the experience of it be foreign to, to Debbie and I during the play date, we meet a couple and there's synergies and we like what we hear, we like what we see, we like what we smell um, and everything is going in the direction where it's going to you know, end up taking us to the bedroom and during discussions that couple says to us one of their hard limits is that they don't want kissing of, of uh, kissing on the lips let's just clarify <laughs> your mouth lips, mouth lips. <laughs> um, i mean your, the other lips are fine <laughs> not the mouth lips yes. <laughs> maybe and i will have a conversation about it and um, and we'll be frank with a couple and say look it, it's outside of our normative interactions you know during sex but if that's a hard limit for you then clearly we'll respect that and we'll try our absolute level best to to honor and obey and respect the decisions and the rules and the minds of that couple but if the couple themselves are um, at loggerheads regarding the, the limits of the couple there's going to be a line crossed at some point mm. um, whether it's the husband doing something that the guy the wife is not happy for him to do or the husband expecting the wife to do something that she's not happy to do. It's just for the sake of, of the, the sanctity of the relationship, rather discuss it to the nth degree. If there's any doubt, rather opt out. Just make sure that you, you are absolutely clear in your mind as to what you want to, uh, what your objectives, uh, objectives are as a couple and what you want to um, experience and achieve. Mm. Yeah, when in doubt, opt out. Yeah, exactly. Um, the a few hours of pleasure versus the couple of weeks, months worth of fights afterwards is mm. just not worth it. And that break in trust, right? Exactly. That break in trust, that break in um, confidence in within your intimate relationship exactly. is just not worth it. It might be the end of your swinging um, relationship with other people. Never mind just swinging, it, it, it can end your relationship it can as end well. end your relationship as well, mm. yes. Because, I mean, that, that's disrespectful, right? Not taking your partner's um, feelings and, and your partner's boundaries into consideration, yeah. that would be a very hard limit for me personally. Yeah, absolutely. Kobe? Yeah, I think the bottom line that I'm getting from this conversation here is your communication is key. Respecting each other's feelings and boundaries is even more important. And as well as not holding expectations of people that are discomfort the, uh, expectations of your partner that they might be uncomfortable with yeah. um don't push them into it if in like in i think it was Lola's second episode on the um Lola's lessons there was a tantric goddess mm -hmm. and she said if your body says absolutely yes go for it if mm -hmm. there's a slight no yes. say no that was that was actually Tara Tara Rose. Yes, Tara, yes, Tara Rose. Because you feel it in your body, and and you and I had this discussion a little bit earlier. That intuition, that yeah. that that vibrations, that something feels or something feels. Yeah. And and as James said, when in doubt, opt doubt. That's that's yeah. what. Trust your gut. That's it. What's next on your list, list, Miss Miss Debbie, Miss Tucson? Um, I think we're not really to discuss cheating. 
Mm. Because um, cheating is not really considered being part of a lifestyle. We know that some people, for their reasons, can't uh, get their partner to do the lifestyle thing with them. Mm. And they feel that the only way that they're going to be able to do this is to do it behind their partner's back. Mm. So first of all, um, if you decide to cheat, you need to decide. You need to be um, willing to accept the consequences if your partner finds out. Mm. On the other hand, if you cheat with people and your partner finds out, it can cause a lot of drama for the people that you have been swinging with. So. For us, for me specifically, cheating is never an answer. Mm. Rather speak to your, 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 your partner and try and communicate until you're both on the same page. But um, yeah, cheating is a, is a very grey line. Can I maybe just add to that? Um, actually, there is actually some, in some cases, there can be legal implications to the person you cheated with. If you decided to cheat and unfortunately if it wasn't their choice and they met you through a swingers club it can turn out very ugly not just for them but for you as well and mm. I've, I've I've got a conscience I'm sorry but um, if I'm causing someone else's someone else harm for my own fuck up I need to take responsibility mm. accountability becomes extremely key here when it comes to cheating don't kink don't cheat and swing don't cheat and kink, whatever it is, mm. it can be it becomes legal, it can become legal, it is a horrendous shit show when it happens. Mm. Um, as well as if you're cheating and so you've got some other venereal disease or or STR, whatever it is, how do you explain that to your partner? Mm. That is a death to a relationship. I'm I'm sorry, that to me that's what it sounds like. I, I think this conversation is, is really gonna raise a few a few hackles because our interaction in the lifestyle there. Um, has definitely led us to believe that um, I would say at least 30% of the of the gentlemen that have approached us are playing without consent. And mm. the feedback that we get from from those guys, and funny enough, it, it's not just, it's not limited to guys. We've also had interactions with with women who are playing without the consent of the of their spouse. Mm. And the, the feeling that we get, or the impression that we get, is that they have broached the subject with the significant other, whether it's a wife or a husband, and there hasn't been a willingness on their on their spouse's part to want to partake in the lifestyle. Mm. And that person uh, feels compelled to want to explore and want to experience the kink and the pleasure that the lifestyle can afford them as a single person there. Mm. So we don't judge, um, but what we are trying to 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 illustrate is that there, there can very definitely be fallout if this gets out. Everything has repercussions, right? Correct. So be prepared to accept the consequences. If you're prepared to accept the, 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 the positives, you have to be prepared uh, to accept the negatives. And mm. you can you can successfully get away with it for two encounters, 22 encounters, 22 years of encounters, but sooner or later the truth will come out you need to be prepared to accept the fallout. And if you can resign yourself to having that conversation, explaining what you've been getting up to, then by all means, you know, let your conscience guide you. If you can, mm. if you can safely negotiate your own your own conscience, then power to you. Mm. But people that we've met in the lifestyle that have confided to us that they are playing without consent, we have always, every single time, encouraged that person to reach out to their spouse and try and either get consent or engage with their spouse and we've offered to to facilitate a conversation with their spouse if, if that person has confided in us that they have tried and they're not prepared to negotiate and they're not prepared to entertain it. We've said to them, you know, mention to them that you've spoken to a couple that is in the lifestyle and have been swinging for a few years mm. and we will facilitate open dialogue. We will give them the horror stories, we'll give them the pleasure stories, we'll tell them Everything that, that, that we've experienced in the lifestyle, the highs, the lows, to be able to, you know, for that, for that person to be able to make an informed decision. Mm. And if after that they're still not keen or not willing, then that person should rather either um, question the relationship that they're in mm. or make different choices. Mm. 
and unfortunately it, it doesn't always work out the way that um, it should work out. Um, <clears throat> in a lot of instances, the guys, have, the ladies have just said, you know what, I'm not prepared to even talk to them. Uh, I have a, I've had this conversation. I'm just going to go ahead and do it behind their backs. Mm -hmm. So it, it happens. It's, it's very prevalent. Mm. Um, the <clears throat> one thing about 95% of the swingers that I know is that they are all about no drama. They are there yes. for pleasure yes. with their partner. And with the contract of, they're all chasing they the contract. They do not of want drama, mm. especially not for, from other cheating parties. spouses. Yes, exactly. Or, or cheating person's spouse. Absolutely. Absolutely no drama mm. that anybody wants in their life. Mm. So on that, right, I, firstly, I want to add on saying, and this is something that I've always had um, as, as an opinion, is... Listen, <laughs> you guys are gonna, if you guys are gonna be swingers, what's the use of cheating? What's the use of swinging if you're gonna be cheating, right? If you wanna swing, swing. But it's not an, it's not an easy out, you know, to sleep with other people. That was the one thing that I wanted to mention. The other thing now, I completely lost my bloody train of thought. And it was really something important. You need to make notes, Lana. I need to, I need to stop. <laughs> Listen, can, can you see how I'm operating here? There's like three screens. And I need to make That's sure fine. the mic is there. And I need to make sure the sign is fine. Um, but it was something that James just said about um, having that conversation with your spouse. Oh, I don't know. Having conversation with your spouse. I'm um, taking the repercussions. At the, there we go. At the end of the day, you've got to weigh up, you know, do your pros and cons list. Risk and reward. Yes, risk and reward. I mean, are you going to take that risk of being a secret swinger, okay, and um, your partner finds out? Is it going to be worth possibly losing your partner and having to embark on the rest of your, your life's journey on your own as opposed to um, just rather... Like, what's more important, swinging and having sex with multiple people or having a loving loving partnership? That's not what the lifestyle is about. The lifestyle is about adding to your intimate relationship, not adding to yourself. It's not a selfish, it, we, we, there's no selfishness in swinging. It's, it's about adding to your intimate relationship, and that's all about doing it wrong, right? That's, that's the wrong way of doing it. And, yes, I've, I've come across a lot of people, um, especially on one of the websites that um, I used to dingle on back in the day, right, is um, a lot of people, like you said, that, that play without consent. The problem is those that their drama becomes your drama, and we don't want drama. No drama long. Absolutely. No drama long. What's next on your list? Keep your drama for your mama. Keep your drama for your mama. <laughs> um, one of the things that we need to discuss is the fact that, especially if you're new and you're uncertain about how things work and how to go about this whole thing, um, you end up at a club or you end up at somebody's house, and you are so nervous that you feel like you need to indulge in a few alcoholic drinks. Dutch it is Dutch never, Dutch. ever, ever a good idea, if you're new in the lifestyle, to overindulge with drinks. Mm. Because you might do something that you want. <coughs> you and your partner might end up not being on the same page in the evening. Mm. Um, Somebody the next morning might not remember how things went and be very, very, very ashamed of what they allowed to happen or what they think might have happened or what they part of tell them that happened. So very, very important for me is that you should not drink too much. Um, another, uh, another level to that is that... Um, it's not always very pleasant to um, have sex with somebody that's had too much to drink. That's over intoxicated. Um, it, it, it takes the fun out of it. Mm. So um, everybody might not end up having pleasure. You don't want to have slurring sex. <laughs> for, for us, the reason why we in, indulge in the lifestyle is for um, a we feel it brings us closer together as a couple, but also for the memories. I mean, it, it's something that we've we've thought about for many years, we've engaged in for many years, but ultimately um, we, we have dry spells of two or three days where we don't sweat. 
<laughs> Only two or three guys. Only two or three months. months. <laughs> and in that time, we, we often recall, uh, we, we recall and recollect the events that have happened in the last year, um, different encounters that we've had with people, um, with couples, and it's nice to be able to reminisce and uh, add to our own intimacy um, if we are alone and, and being intimate to recall moments of a play date where something specific happened, something specifically that I saw Debbie getting up to or something specifically that, that I saw happening to Debbie. So to imagine being in, in a state of intoxication and I'm, I'm no tea time, I enjoy, I enjoy my, my drink. Yeah, we're not saying don't drink at yeah, all. I enjoy a drink or three, but when it comes to a play date, um, being compass mentis enough to remember everything vividly to me is quite important. Um, mm. It adds to that visceral, that visceral, visceral pleasure that I get seeing her with somebody, and, and for the next week or the next two weeks, sitting at my desk, um, recalling the, the events of the evening, there's a huge turn on that you know inspires me through through the course of the day to want to go home and recreate it to a large or lesser degree with her. Mm. Um, just through the memories that we live. So alcohol will definitely dilute that. Mm. So yeah, what Debbie's saying, have a few drinks if, if, if that's your if that's your bag, um, but moderate your intake, if, if, especially if you're new. Um, we've seen it way too many times where a couple has maybe one experience um, under their belts and we meet them at a club and they are absolutely hammered. Um, and they are looking to hook up. And, you know, the last thing you want is for <coughs> boundaries to be crossed or um, expressions of interest to be misconstrued mm. and for consent issues to be debated the next day. You know, mm. did I say it was okay for, for her to do that to him? And did I say it was okay for him to touch her there? So, yeah, being... being uh, sound and, and clear mind to us anyway is very important. Mm. Look, I know KB wanted to add to this, but while she's reconnecting, I'm just going to mention that a lot of a lot of um, newbies, especially if it's the first time they're embarking on something, they need like a drink or two to calm the nerves. You Which know, when they meeting fine. new people, exactly. yeah, that's fine. We're not saying but that's not okay. Fifteen drinks is too much. But, I mean, yes. Also, don't be too nervous. If you're too nervous, you're not ready. Yeah. Right. Then well, no. I mean. Nerves are, are, are unique to every person. I mean, we've met, in fact, very recently, as recently as a month ago, we met a couple who had absolutely no no experience of life. They never went to a club. You broke their virginity? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 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 You see, now that's always going to be more. <laughs> they never went to a club. They'd never spoken to a pretty <coughs> couple at all. They happened upon the website. Uh, they've only discussed it between themselves. Yeah. That that's as, as far so as they, they exploring had, the options. Exactly. They, they had that conversation. The conversation was they wanted to invite a third into their bed. How mm. did they go about it? So they did the the research thing on, on the internet. She googled swinging clubs. Kind of got on a list. That's how they decided to come to a party. They, <laughs> they had never spoken to another couple. Mm. Not on WhatsApp. Not on Telegram. Not on SMS. Not on phone. They arrived at a swingers club as a couple, newbie. Yo, that's dangerous, guys. For the first time ever, and just arrived there, bold, um, very confident, and during the course of the evening, I think I saw them collectively probably have two drinks. So they didn't need that Dutch courage. Mm. They had that conversation. But also they were together. What about sing singles? A different story. But they yeah. also had a conversation about what they were comfortable with mm. and what their um, objectives were mm. in terms of their outcome for the evening and look, for the experience. Look, I know Katie's had her hand up for the longest time, and I know um, Debbie wants to add to this too. But I just want to, like, I, I never share any personal experiences, right, but I'm going to nut now because this is something that people need to know about. Hold on to your hands, folks. Hold on to your I never talk about my personal life. Everybody knows this. Everybody that's been a guest on the show, they know. Like, there's rules. No race, no religion, or politics, or Lola's personal life. Nobody ever talks about Lola's personal life. But I'll share with the last for listeners, right, um, one the one of the things that I've that I've experienced in my journey, my life journey, not the swinging journey, not monogamous journey, not my life journey. I went to the very first time 
I found myself in a lifestyle club, right? I, obviously, I'm not going to name any names. I'll never go back to the place. Everybody knows this. Everybody that knows me knows this. Um, but I was not drinking that night. I had water and ice the entire night because it's a new place, it's a new environment. I've got my wits about me when it comes to those things, right? I know for a fact I didn't drink. I can't remember how I got home that night. can't remember anything from the evening. It was the first time in my life, and I was a, like a big-ass jeweler. I was a dancer for most of my young, you know, my, my 20s. Most of my 20s, I danced at festivals. I was an, like a... Um, I was a dancer, not a strip dancer, not an exotic dancer, but I danced at like HR and clubs to entertain people. So I've been in the club scene for many, many, many years. At a disco club, I have never, ever, ever been spiked. I go for the first time to a lifestyle club, very first time in my life, and I cannot remember a thing that happened there. Guys, yes, lifestyle club, and I want, I, I'm saying this with a reason. Yes, guys, lifestyle clubs are much safer than a discotheque or a rave club or a dance club. Okay, we know this because lifestyle, lifestyle is keep each other safe. That's part of the community rules. But there are those odd exceptions. Mm. So please make sure if you are going to have something at a club, if you are going to drink something at a club, be safe. If yeah, something like that can happen to Lola and everybody knows, I'm <laughs> like... I'm a little bitch, right? When it goes to come to, to going out, I protect myself. I'm I'm not approachable. Very full of shit. If they could have spiked my drink, trust me, honey, they can spike yours. So I just wanted to add that. Sorry. You, oh yes, Kaby, you were next. You had your your hand up for the longest time. <laughs> Um, so, Ms. Lola, you actually answered my question. I was actually going to ask about what do you do in the case of you have a couple of nerves, you end up, you <coughs> about to meet a new couple, you're just walking into a club for the first time. You said having a drink to just calm those nerves is not really going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. But now I'm going to speak from my own experiences, and no, it's not one of my current partners. I can tell you that much. From my own Ms. Gaby is Polly, for those listeners that have just joined us. Yes, I am I am Polly. Um, I happen to have a play partner who gets a little bit too drunk in in the party vibe and I used to tease him a little bit because it would get to the point where he would actually go soft halfway in play and it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't very don't talk to with us one eh? so don't drink too much people because it can affect your sexual drive if <laughs> it's going to affect your performance <laughs> So it's also going to affect your performance. <laughs> and and to, to add to that, the, the, the lifestyle, uh, as, as, as large as the lifestyle is, it's, it's, it's a fairly close-knit, <coughs> fairly tight community. Mm. So those, those players who... Overindulge. Uh, well, not overindulge, but those players who have repeated performance issues. Oh. Um, yeah, they, they get a reputation. A reputation <laughs> not a good reputation. Don't, don't get out of that list, guys. If you can, you'll we'll stay on the very short list. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so I want to get back to this couple that joined the party a few weeks ago. So we were chatting to them and... Uh, the girl was saying to us that they just decided that afternoon that they want to go to a club. So she went onto Google and she found a list of clubs and then she started with the one at the top um, because it wasn't Joburg and she phoned them and um, this happens to be the same club that you're talking about, uh, Lola, where you had wait, wait, I, I, okay. And the first thing that she says is, she asked them, what do I need to do to book for tonight's party? And they said, oh, no, you can just show up. And she was like, no, I, I'm not going to, I'm not ha I'm not happy with that. So she found the next club, which happens to be the club where we were at. Nexus. Nexus. Mm -hmm. And they told them that they're going to have to sign an indemnity form and they had to book, they had to pay up, up front. And she was happy to come along. So this goes back to what you were saying earlier mm. about be mindful if this is your first time especially mm -hmm. um, of where you go. Mm. Look, I, I, and I, everybody knows this, right? And if you're listening to the first, if this is the first time listening to this, to this or any of the other production shows, um, then you'll know now. 
but Lila openly and and avically um, promotes Nexus. Nexus is in the heart of Jyberg, um in in Madrid. If you guys want to get into uh, get in touch with with um, you know the owners at Nexus, uh, hit me up on socials. Get hold of Tucson because they also host parties at Nexus. They host the PFC parties, the exclusive parties that um, Mr. James was talking about earlier. They host parties at Nexus. That's the only club I will openly promote because I go there myself. I mean, not not as a lifestyle, you'll never see me. Unfortunately, guys, don't get excited, right? You won't see me there without my clothes on. I'm always fully oh. clothed. <laughs> oh. But Lila loves the people, right? I love the people there. Those are my people. Those are my friends. I mean, I've got a lot of lifestyle friends. So that's the only club that I will openly promote. And, and like, if you want me to promote your club, you're going to have to come and prove to me why. It, like, convince me. Nexus has gone through that process of convincing me. That's a place where I feel safe because I know what the vetting process is and it's a members only club. If you're not a member, honey, you're not getting in. You can stand there and even flash all your thousands, your 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 like hundreds hundred dollar bills. That's not that's not gonna get you in, right? <laughs> Playing nice and flattering your, your eyelashes at the guard at the gates is also not gonna get you far because I've done that before. And you're really <laughs> not just showing up at the gate. No, it's exactly <laughs> And and I tried that. And I mean, I'm a member. I go there often. I know the owner. I mean, the, the friends with the owner. And I I went to one party and I got there late and I wasn't booked. I wasn't going to go there. And they wouldn't let me in. Good. Ex and that's exactly, exactly that's exactly why we want to go there. That's exactly why we want to go there, right? Because like we said earlier, you have a perspective as well. well. I've been to a couple of the clubs in Joburg. I've I've had to do my own research. Mm. Um, I, for one, also say go to Nexus. You're going to get guided through your whole journey from start to finish. Um, people like um, Debbie and James here are there to help you through your, your first steps into this type of club. Um, I mean, the owners are just wonderful people. There's no comparison, yeah. So, let's send lustful listeners. Before we say goodnight this evening, I'm going to ask, maybe is there anything else that you feel... That it's, it's a very hard system. Yeah, I just, uh, I just want to briefly mention expectations. Um, I'm going to again <coughs> go back to this couple that we met a few weeks ago. Mm. On the day I decided they've never done anything, they've never spoken to anybody, they want to go to a club. Because the guy decided that he wants to have a threesome with another girl and his oh, wife. Well, they decided. Yeah. Yeah, not him. They, yeah, but I mean, it was his fantasy and they were and there for his fantasy. Yes. Um, so you're going to have to manage your expectations when you go to a club. Never, ever, ever go there with the expectation that tonight you're going to have sex with five people. Uh, you are going to have a, an awesome, sexual, amazing experience. Rather go to the club expecting to have fun. To have fun, have a good time. Have a good time, meet people, socialize with a lot of people. Learn something. Make new friends mm -hmm. and it is just such an added bonus if you do have that chemistry with another couple and you end up being... Finding yourself in the midst of negotiations. Exactly, and you go home mm -hmm. with a smile on your face. Yes. Yes, KB. Okay, so speaking to those expectations, last week in our last four lectureships with um, Nikki and Daryl, they also explained that don't go to the club for the first time with any forms of expectations to swap and play with other people. You're mostly going to end up socializing, and 99% of the time you're going to end up having a lot more fun with your, your actual partner, mm. um, and it's going to be so erotic, and you're going to just connect on a better level. Mm. Um, don't go in with expectations. Maybe if you've got friends already and you've planned that you're going to play with those people, you've set those boundaries, those limits, then chances are very good you've got an expectation that you're going to play. But generally, don't walk in with an expectation. Mm. Some of our most erotic uh, experiences um, have come from evenings where we've been sitting there at 11 o'clock in the evening thinking, we're having fun, we're having fun together. But it's going to be the two of us. Yeah. It's not going to be a, become a play date with another couple or with a, a third, a, a single guy or a unicorn. But we, we resign ourselves to, that's not, we are tonight, we're having fun, we, our, our relationship is being built upon and we are um, taking another step on, on our journey and on our adventure. Yeah. And then that evening takes a turn when somebody just walks around the corner 
sees us, comes and sits, sits down, into, you know, introduces themselves, and within 15 minutes there is such a rapport that's being built, and 15 minutes after that we find ourselves in a room with a couple that we essentially met 45 minutes ago. Mm. And we've also had experiences where we've gone to a, a party at a club, um, be it in, in wherever, in Joburg, Durban, Cape Town, and we've had the most amazing chemistry with a couple. We've been chatting for hours, thinking that, oh, this is absolutely going to be an amazing, mind-blowing uh, evening. Mm. Um, and we, you know, we look at each other and we give us, each other that knowing, that knowing smile. Um, Debbie is absolutely into the guy, and I'm absolutely into the wife. And the next thing they say, we're just going to pull out drinks, we'll see you now. And then we don't see them again. And mm. an hour later, they, they hooked up with another couple that got their five minutes before they hooked up. Mm. So having expectations is probably one of the worst things you can do to yourselves if you are um, venturing into the lifestyle or if you, you're already in the lifestyle. Mm. And I think um, seasoned lifestylers will know that. Don't expect anything. It's those evenings where you don't have expectations that you end up having the most fun. The most fun. And if you go into a, into an event space with a preconceived idea of an outcome, it's, it's very seldom you're in that way. So you're um, and also, please just remember that every lid doesn't fit every pot. Mm. If people are not into you, or if you are not into people, it's perfectly okay to turn them down. Say no. Yeah. Mm. But please don't be an arsehole about it. Be mm. kind. And, and that's another question, uh, especially from newbies. Uh, I know you want to wrap up that. Like that's that. fine. No, 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 please. As much information as we can get to them. Uh, a lot of the newbies, um, and it sounds like a derogatory term, but it really isn't. Um, couples that are new in the lifestyle um, have difficulty in, in that um, turning down of another couple. They, they're sitting there having a drink, and then a couple comes over, and it's just not their match. The, the chemistry isn't there. But the other couple obviously is feeling the chemistry and they um, might have been in the lifestyle for a lot longer than this couple and they flat out say to them, are you guys keen on going to a private room or going to the horror room, room and playing? And those couples have, have asked us, how do you say no without feeling guilty? Mm. And it's important to note that feelings of guilt shouldn't really be prevalent on your journey in the lifestyle. You're there for your pleasure. You're there to, to enhance your relationship. You aren't there to, to stroke egos. You're not there to make other people feel good about themselves. They've got their own journey to, to, to walk. Mm. They need to sort those issues out. If, if you are upfront about it, and as Debbie said, you don't need to be an arsehole about it. Just be, be frank about it. Don't waste their time. And just say to them, thanks. You guys seem like an awesome couple. Unfortunately, the chemistry isn't there for us. <coughs> Every lifestyle of worth their soul will, will absolutely take that on the chin. Thank you for your honesty, and they'll move along. So, yeah, don't be shy. Okay. I love that. Well, lustful listeners, um, I want to start by thanking the guests this evening. Debbie, Jones, as usual, it's been an honor having you guys on the show. It always is. It's an honor for us to be here. It's been absolutely amazing just spending time with you guys and just having you like in... My, my vibrations again. I feel full. It feels like my battery's been recharged. I've had love in my life today. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you for always making concerted efforts to add value to something like this because it's something that, that you guys feel passionate about and education is also something that you guys feel passionate about. I mean, I'm always forever, whenever we are at Nexus, I'm forever seeing you guys guiding couples, chatting to people and giving advice. And that makes you guys invaluable in the lifestyle. I hope you guys realise that you guys add value to people. Thank you. So thank you for that. KB, my love, as usual, thank you for joining me this evening. I'm in Brighton early tomorrow morning. I know it's Sunday, but you don't have a day tomorrow, yes? Miss Lola, you know me. I'm always up early. Oh, I love you, but you can have tomorrow off, yes? <laughs> Last call, Miss News, what's to come this week on the Lola Blakely Enterprises Production shows on Wednesday night. Tune in 9 o'clock for Spanks and Sparkles, Impact 101, with Miss Gail, with um, Lola and Miss Kitten. Come and explore Impact 101 and come and find out how to give Spanx so that your bum and your other parts of your body sparkle. Also, we're going to be doing a live Impact Play on air. You guys don't want to miss this. It's going to be kinky as fuck, right? 
On Lola's Listens Friday night, we have the penetration prohibition. What does prohibition mean, guys? Prohibition means no penetration. That means we're talking oral and hand. Yes, yes, that's all we're using next week, Friday, on Lola's Lessons. It is the hands-on guide to passing an oral exam. And I mean, everything's involved there besides <laughs> penetration. Okay, but let me just tell you guys. Nine o'clock Friday night, don't miss it. Miss it and miss out. Next week on Lifestyle Lectureship, next week Saturday evening, same time, same place. Come and join us on air as we discuss dangerously debaucherous. Because fingers can be debaucherous, let's be honest. Yes. I mean, the orgies, the gangbangs, it can be a debaucherous debacle, right? And it can be dangerous at times. Let's find out how to avoid the danger of the debauchery and just plan to have fun. Next week, Saturday at 9 p.m. on uh, Lola's Lifestyle Lectureship. And on that note, last listeners, it's been a great week. It's been a successful week, and we've had astronomical shows with amazing guests. We're going to take a little bit of a break for a couple of days, but we'll see you next week, Wednesday, same time, same place. Love you loads. Good night, be well, and go get lustful. Good night, y'all. The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of any entities they represent or that of the program, its presenters, hosts, directors or other team members. This show is intended for audiences aged 23 and older. This production and its digital copies contain content of an adult nature. If you are easily offended or are under the age of 18, this show is not intended for you. The posts, pages and recordings within are intended for adults only and may include descriptions of scenes of sexual content, suggestive opinions, detailed discussions and graphic topics. Listener discretion is advised. Thank you.